Get ready to rumble. Chilling Show Unleashed on the Seven Thunders Media Network. Former city councilor, husband, father, and community watchdog. Your host, Rob Schilling. Welcome to the Shilling Show Unleashed podcast. Remember, your direct support makes our show possible, and you can directly support this podcast by visiting shillingshow.com and then clicking on the Patreon banner at the top of the page to make a monthly contribution. We appreciate your support. Welcome to the Shilling Show Unleashed podcast. And there's something I need to get off my chest today because it's really been bothering me a lot. In fact, it bothered me so much that I went to Facebook Live and spoke on the subject for about 15 minutes, and I will direct you there. But I wanted to talk about this whole concept of loving your neighbor in the time of COVID. You see, a lot of people have been saying to me directly, well, by email sometimes, but have been saying to me, but to society in a greater way, that you need to wear a mask or I need to wear a mask in order to show that you and I are loving our neighbor. They're quoting specific Bible verses. They're quoting Jesus and saying, hey, what would Jesus do? This is fascinating to me. First of all, people on the left quoting the Bible because mostly they hate the Bible. They despise the Bible. They don't want to be bound by anything that's in the Bible. And yet when it's convenient for them to quote the Bible to me, they'll quote it and try to put it in my face. Of course, generally way out of context. To the answer, what would Jesus do? I remember seeing these bumper stickers on cars in Charlottesville, uh, driving around by uh, probably atheistic leftists or pseudo-Christian leftists with the motto on there, who would Jesus bomb? And whenever I saw that, I often had these pictures of the book of Revelation, which I've studied over the course of many decades, uh, going back to the late great planet Earth and most recently in the Left Behind books and beyond. But I often think when they say, who would Jesus bomb, go read the book of Revelation, because there's going to be a time of bloodletting, which is going to be unprecedented in human history. And Jesus will be taking God's revenge out on people who have pushed God to the side and who have blasphemed and turned against God in every way, despite the chance that they had a free will to accept him. So I always think of that when people say, well, what would Jesus do or who would Jesus bomb? Uh, Go read the book of Revelation. It will be instructive to you. Something else to bring us some clarity in all of this. Why would I or any rational person allow the left in America to dictate morality to me or to define love? Think about this. What is the morality of the left and what is it based on? Well, it's based on the human heart. It's based on the emotions of the moment. You see, there's no timeless morality to the left. It's why you have a Commonwealth attorney like Jim Hingley in Albemarle County who says, I'm just going to do what I want to do and I'm going to follow my heart and decide whether someone should be prosecuted. Not what the law says. We're turning into a nation of men and not a nation of laws because a nation of men just decides which way we want to go and it's based only on the human heart, which the Bible tells us is desperately wicked. When you see all these people around Charlottesville, particularly following the events of August 2017 with the little love stickers on their car, you know, Charlottesville and then a heart, do you think those people are truly loving? Do you think those people would truly accept the diversity of opinions on things going on socially in Charlottesville? They're not loving at all. They'll love the people they want to love, but everyone else will be hated on, imprisoned, harassed, outed on social media, driven out of town, and more. That is the left's morality. It's based on nothing other than a whim, and it's why it is so dangerous, because it turns on a dime. It's why people who are affiliated with the left get into mobs and turn on people who were formerly their friends. This is the quote-unquote love of the left. They don't know what real love is. So I think about all of this, and there certainly are a lot of things that we could consider when people say to us, hey, you need to be loving. You need to love me by wearing a mask. And so I started putting this list together and thinking about all the things I could say back to them. Hey, if you love me, 
If you truly love me and you want to love your neighbor, then I want you to stop taking things that belong to someone else or breaking things that belong to someone else. That sounds like a fair trade-off, doesn't it? So get your hands off these monuments. Stop smashing things. Stop destroying things. Stop taking things that don't belong to you. Fair enough. We have a deal, but they won't take that. How about people that want to demonize other people because of their skin color? This is the very same crowd who are telling me that uh, in order to love them, I need to wear a mask. Well, then I'll tell you, stop demonizing me or any other person because of my skin color or their skin color. How about this one? Don't subvert election integrity or the voting process. You know, all these people that are trying to destroy elections in Virginia, they're the same crowd telling me, if you love me, wear a mask. It shows your Christian love for me. And of course, this is a big one for me because I see it all over the place. Don't welcome lawbreakers or border crashers right across the street from where I live. There's a house and I like the people very much. But they have this little three colored sign out in their front yard and it says words to the effect of, you know, we don't care who you are, or where you come from, you're welcome here. That's not loving because it's in violation of civil laws and it's in violation of laws which are here to protect everybody else who's here legally. So when you welcome people that are breaking the law, when you welcome people that are crashing the border and coming here to take and don't follow the rules, that's deprecating everybody else here legally and those waiting to become legal in the United States of America. I think also one of the most ironic things is the people who are calling for love, those who say love me by wearing a mask, I'll bet you largely are people who favor abortion, those who want to kill preborn babies in the womb or even let them die on the table. Isn't it ironic that they say love me by wearing a mask because you might be saving a life? I think it was Governor Cuomo in New York who said, hey, if we could save even one life, the shutdown of New York and by connection, the shutdown of the United States would be worth it, this economic disaster we've put upon ourselves just to save one life. Hey, Governor Cuomo and the rest of the so-called pro-choice, the really pro-death movement, if you really want to be loving, if it's worth it to save just one life, you can do it a lot easier than wearing a mask, which is dubious at best. Go to the abortion clinics and tell them to stop killing babies. There are so many more of these, and I would encourage you to check out our blog post at chillingshow.com called 50 Ways to Love Your Neighbor in the Era of COVID, because we really need to be prepared for this attack and people who generally are anti-biblical, who don't believe in God, trying to use the Bible to justify something that is not justifiable, at least not in that way. The Shilling Show Unleashed podcast continues in just a moment. Associated Press award-winning journalist, Rob Schilling. Borderhawk.news is a one-stop shop with the latest news about immigration, nationalism, and globalism. The Borderhawk staff daily curates immigration news stories and in the fashion of the Drudge Report, updates the site with cutting-edge content and original first-class commentary. Borderhawk.news highlights national and international media reports, tweets and nuggets buried in local news blurbs, polls, video clips, and policy research. Borderhawk is pro-legal immigration, pro-rule of law, but against an unsecure border as countless Americans have suffered violence at the hands of criminal illegal aliens. And an increasing number of Americans are concerned about how mass migration affects their daily life. Borderhawk.news will remain on the forefront of the immigration issue with a buffet of info to read, evaluate, and share. Bookmark Borderhawk.news. Add them on social media at Borderhawk News on Twitter. Looking out for us. Rob Schaub. 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 The Shilling Show Unleashed podcast continues with Brian Fisher, the host of Focal Point Radio. And the topic today is masks don't work. He's done a, a tremendous piece on this that everybody should read. Brian Fisher, welcome to The Shilling Show Unleashed. Thank you, Rob. Good to be with you. You know, we're talking about mask mania here, and I'm wondering, because I haven't, if you've seen anything like this in recent history. We're just going crazy as a nation. Well, yeah, it really is nuts. I mean, one of the things is that we're doing is completely wrong. That's never been done in any civilized society before is that we are quarantining perfectly healthy people. 
what we've always done. You even go back to the days of Jesus, and the lepers were quarantined. They had to be in their own colony and all that kind of thing. There was, there's never a, an instance in history where we've locked healthy people up. Uh, we, what we do is try to protect the healthy from the sick. So anyway, that's just bizarre. And then this mask thing, we've never seen any, anything like this before where these mask mandates where you can be fined if you continue to persist, you could even be threatened with jail time for not wearing a face covering. That's completely unexampled, at least in American history, for sure. You know, Brian, here in our community in Central Virginia, the home of Thomas Jefferson, uh, of all people, uh, we can be thrown in jail for up to a year uh, and find $2,500. It's one of the most draconian fines I'm aware of in the entire country. We've got a George Soros sponsored Commonwealth's attorney who says you must carry papers with you to prove a medical exemption if you have one. And if you don't have the papers with you, they cannot be used to prove your innocence after you've been arrested and thrown in jail. I mean, things like this are are almost unfathomable in an America that was with us just a few months ago. You know, and you touched on an issue there, Rob, the involvement of George Soros and all this. He's been on a campaign for probably almost a decade now to fund radical leftist district attorneys because he knows that's where the juice is. You get a radical leftist in the position of a district attorney who gets to decide who gets prosecuted and who doesn't. You can begin to completely reshape the political environment. So that's an example of his money at work copping things up right there in central Virginia. So, Brian, what's behind this mania? Why now? Why are we so susceptible at this point? Well, it's it's an it's an amazing thing, Rob, you know, to look at how, you know, there was a saying at the time that Abraham Lincoln referred to once that you can fool uh, some of the people all the time. Mm-hmm. And America is a perfect example of that. I mean, this the stuff that's being dispensed about this, the mania. I mean, it's really a hysteria over wearing masks uh, is there's no science behind it. None. Zero. Zip. Nada. But, you know, people do feel a little bit safer if they're wearing a mask over their face. They think they're under the illusion that they're protecting people around them. Uh, then they're under the illusion that they're being protected by from people around them. But the reality is, if you look at the science, you look at the research that's been and there's been quite a number of studies done in my column. I've got studies going back to 2009, scientific randomized controlled studies of masks. And the conclusion in every single case is that masks just do not work. They are useless in trying to stop a respiratory infection. So that's the science. You know, and everybody around us, you know, all these talking heads, they talk about how we've got to be driven by the science. We've got to make decisions based on data. We've got to be data controlled, science controlled. Okay, well, here you got studies for over a decade saying that the solution that you're mandating that everybody follow doesn't even work. It's useless. So whatever sense of protection somebody has is completely illusory. Like these N95 masks, that's kind of the gold standard in masks. And there was a big crisis when we didn't have enough of them and we were going to China to get millions of N95 masks. That's kind of the gold standard. Well, the deal with the gold, with the N95 masks is they're designed to filter stuff that comes in, but they're not designed to catch anything that's going out. So if you're wearing one of these N95 masks, whatever you breathe is going right out through that mask. It's not being filtered. It's not being slowed down. So, and, and if you're in a Walmart and you see a guy wearing an N95 mask, you may think that you're being protected from whatever he's breathing out, but you're not. It's, it's a completely illusory sense of uh, protection. The cloth masks are even worse. They don't filter anything at all. And the surgical masks, you know, they're designed for a sterile environment because that's where they're using surgical centers and all that kind of thing. Uh, and they get quickly get clogged. You put them in a contaminated environment like the average outdoor environment we walk around in, they're going to collect debris, fungi and bacteria on the outside of that mask. That's the only thing they're going to uh, collect. And if those things aren't replaced in 20 to 30 minutes or washed, but the longest you can go is about four hours, according to the research without getting yourself in trouble. And then if you've got all this stuff collected on your mask, you know, you take it off and put it back on, you touch your face while you're doing that. And so whatever you've got on your mask, you're just kind of stirring it up. 
and making it likely that you're start you're going to start breathing in the particles of whatever you have collected over the course of the day, thinking that you were protecting yourself, thinking you were being so safe, uh, so safe, and you wind up just putting your own health in jeopardy. You know, Brian Fisher, it's so interesting that we have all of this all of this information that you've just stated about the various types of masks. And I, I would venture to say that 95% of Americans, maybe higher, uh, have never been trained in the proper use and handling of a mask, and they're not fitted properly. They're putting their hands all over them and touching and cross-contaminating. And so it may, in fact, be making the situation worse. Well, you know, from the N95 masks only really work if there's a tight fit on the face. There's no gaps. There's no air coming in from the sides. Uh, but most people don't put them on that way don't wear them that way so if you've got a mask like a surgical mask that has you know it, it poofs out at the sides, so there's access uh to your respiratory system to your lungs through the mask i mean things can come in from the side of the mask because they're airborne the aerosols you know unless that's a tight fit it uh you're still you're still at risk and most people like you're saying rob most people don't understand that they don't know that they don't know how to wear one of these masks properly so the, they have an illusion they're being protected, but they're not. There's also a lot of foolishness going on culturally. Brian Fisher, uh, in my own children's uh, dance classes, they're forcing kids who are under extreme stress from exercising to wear masks and to normalize this. I've pulled my kids out of that program, but a lot of people are going along with this. I fear that we're creating a whole generation that's going to be looking at this from a very dangerous perspective and just embracing it when, in fact, it could be dangerous to them under those circumstances. Well, you know, if the science indicates they don't work, then you have to stop and ask the question, why is why is this, why is there a mania around this? Why are our medical leaders I mean, even Dr. Fauci at the beginning of this thing said, you don't need to wear masks. World Health Organization, you don't need to wear masks. And then they changed somewhere along the road. And all of a sudden, Dr. Fauci says, you got to wear a mask. You go outside, you're going to die. World Health Organization, completely on a dime, shifted their recommendations. The CDC completely shifted their recommendations, like on a dime. And I think it's because if they can stir up fear and hysteria about this invisible virus that you can't see, then they can have a people that are docile and will do whatever they want. So I think it creates power for them because they get people afraid. You know, my wife's got a friend that she talks to regularly who will not go anywhere uh, unless everybody where she goes is wearing a mask. I mean, that is how driven by fear she has become completely irrational. You know, and if you believe in the Bible, there's 365 <laughs> commands in the Bible, like one for every day, fear not, do not fear. And yet we are being driven by this fear-induced hysteria that has no basis in science and fact. So, you know, I'm, I'm all for being guided by science. I'm all for being guided by data. But we ought to be guided by science and data on this and like your kids' example, you know, kids are virtually immune to this thing to begin with. And then putting masks on them, which actually interferes with their breathing and their respiration. You know, <clears throat> dancing is a you know, fairly vigorous form of exercise. You need to be able to breathe in order to do that effectively. So it's just counterintuitive, whether you have any science or not, it's just counterintuitive that you would teach kids teach kids to do teach kids to do something that involves strenuous physical activity and interfere with their breathing that makes no sense at all we're talking with brian fisher from focal point radio on his column masks don't work and of course very recently we've had uh, democrat vice uh, excuse me democrat presidential candidate uh, joe biden say that we need a national mask mandate. I mean, this seems to be going in exactly the opposite direction of where it needs to go. And I, I really fear a President Biden for that reason and many others. But, you know, I don't think we're going to get any relief from the courts either, Brian. I filed a lawsuit here along with a local business owner against our governor. And uh, the judge is here just uh, blindly supporting the governor's executive power. I think the same thing may happen at the executive level of the country. Well, I think you're right about that. And you know, they don't work. You know, there's a, there's a sheriff down in Florida who is forbidding his deputies to wear masks. In other words, he's aware of the lack of any kind, uh, any kind of scientific support for this. And so nobody, none of his deputies can wear masks and nobody can wear a mask in into the sheriff's office. 
Uh, so he's the one guy that's thinking with some kind of common sense. But you're right. A lot of political leaders, uh, they don't want to take a chance that they might be wrong. So they just slap a draconian edict on everybody. And then they feel like they've done their job. And all they've done is created an illusory sense of safety. And they've actually put people's health at risk. You know, you get these masks that are collecting this stuff on the outside. You're just kind of a portable bacteria and fungus dispenser everywhere you go you are shedding whatever this bacteria and fungus you breathe that have been caught by your mask and as far as the you know the coronavirus is concerned they're carried in tiny little aerosol droplets and the droplets are too small the the pores in all of the masks every one of them are too small to catch a droplet that's carrying the virion that's the thing that causes the infection the pores are too small in these masks to capture these things which means that something is going to get through. And, and it only requires one virion to cause an infection, just one. So anything gets through the mask, any virion particle gets through the mask, then there's the likelihood of infection. So, again, the masks aren't doing you any good. They're probably compromising your health and compromising the health of people around you. You know, and the worst are the cloth masks, the ones that people that do it yourself mask. They are the absolute worst. They don't filter anything going out or anything uh, coming in. So, you know, I just think it's time for common sense. We need judges that have common sense. You know, a lot of these mandates, uh, Rob, they're issued by governors or mayors. And then we do give our governors a certain amount of latitude to exercise emergency authority because we know they're going to get into a situation that nobody could have anticipated. It's an emergency. It requires sudden decisions and leadership. And so I say, well, you can't get the legislature to get it right away. So let's give the governor 30 days of emergency powers. But most, in most cases, the emergency powers expire after 30 days, and they have to be renewed, and the legislature has to renew them. Uh, so the legislature would have to meet, convene within 30 days, and decide, yeah, we need to reauthorize this emergency power. Otherwise, those emergency directives are of no legal binding significance. And you would think and hope, you know, that a judge would recognize that. It's his job to know the law, study the law. State law only authorizes 30 days of it. Then it's got to be reauthorized by the legislature. And to my knowledge, you know, these emergency orders are being reauthorized or being reissued by governors and mayors all over the country. And if it's after 30 days, then not one of those uh, reissuances has any kind of legal authority uh, at all. And you would hope a judge would know better, but they don't. Finally, Brian Fisher, I'd like to go to the social and faith-based aspect of this. I've heard a lot of pastors across the country, and quite frankly, I'm very disappointed in uh, Christian pastors who say, you know, you need to love your neighbor and do this. This is this is an expression of love. It can be biblically supported. And I know you've heard the same thing. I'd love to get your take on those statements. Well, you know, I think that is, is a complete red herring, and it's completely false. You know, I do not. In fact, if I want to show my neighbor love, then the last thing I want to do is do something that would create a false impression about whether he's safe or not. And every time we wear a mask, we're sending a signal to the people who are around, hey, masks will keep you safe. That's not loving your neighbor. That's actually endangering uh, their health. So I, I, I just don't see the merit to that line of argument. I understand it superficially. If you're not wearing a mask, people are going to endanger being infected by you. But the reality is the science does not bear that out, so there's no substance to it. And I believe love always ought to be informed. Uh, you know, uh, Paul says that we are to speak the truth in love. So we're to speak in love. We are to speak the truth in love. In other words, if we're not speaking the truth, then it's not love. We may think it is because it sounds nice and it sounds kind or whatever, but it's not love unless it's, it's being spoken in truth. There's one other part of this that I want to get to, Brian Fisher, and it is the dehumanizing aspect of wearing a mask, and this goes along faith lines as well. God created us unique individuals that all look different from one another, and what we're seeing now is a group, a, a, a nation of people who cannot be separated from one another by God's unique mark upon them, again, because of these masks that are making everybody virtually the same. Do you see a problem there as well? Well, you know, I absolutely do, and I think you're right. I mean, our face is where we express our personality. That needs to be open and seen. In fact, there was a segment in the Old Testament where Moses was wearing a mask. He was going in and meet with the Lord. 
he'd come out and his face would be glowing. It would be raving. It frightened people to death. And so they begged him to wear a mask when he was out in public. But when Moses went in to meet with the Lord, he would take off his mask so he could speak face to face with the Lord. And again, I think that's a signal. That's the kind of communication God intends for all of us to have. And, you know, it's actually created some law enforcement problems, you know, because you have these riots and these demonstrators and these domestic terrorists beating people up, you know, knocking people out, pulling them out of their cars, kicking them in the head and sending them to the hospital. And a lot of them are wearing masks. It makes it difficult for law enforcement to identify uh, the perpetrator. So that's not good for anybody. So where do we go from here, Brian Fisher? Well, you know, that's a good question. You know, I my personal philosophy is I don't wear a mask anywhere where a private business owner uh, doesn't ask me to. I believe that if somebody is owns a private business, it's his business, he gets to decide who comes into a store, who goes out, you know, no shirt, no shoes, no service. We've had that around for years. And I think business owners have a right to do that. So if I go into a shop and he's got a sign that he's requiring masks and I will wear it in the store just for his sake, just because I want to patronize the business. He's got something I want. This is something that he's asking. So I'll cooperate with that, but that's private business. But I think this business about government issuing these kind of edicts, there's no foundation for that in law, particularly after 30 day emergency period. So, uh, you know, it's like John MacArthur, you know, John yes. MacArthur's church, they're continuing to meet, even though the governor says you can't, even though we might send the cops in there like communist China to stop you and arrest you for doing and saying the wrong thing. I think we just need to begin to exercise liberty. You don't know if enough of us do it, Rob. You know, if enough, there's 375 church, thousand churches in America. If they all decided to meet on Sundays, no matter what their governor was saying, there's no way they could be stopped. There aren't enough police in the country to arrest them all, not enough jail cells for everybody. So we could win that showdown completely hands down and preserve liberty and religious liberty in the process. So I think it's going to require a little bit of initiative on the part of Americans to recognize the silliness of all this and and start just going free, going mask free. You know, back in the Old West, that was a sign of suspicion. If you had a guy wearing a bandana over his mm-hmm. face, he was coming to rip you off. And I think we're probably not far from drawing the same conclusion here today. Brian Fisher, if people would like to follow you, if they'd like to hear your radio program or read your columns, tell us how they could do that. Well, my columns are up at our main website at American Family Association. It's afa.net. That's for American Family Association, afa.net. And then if folks would like to uh, live stream my program, they can do it on our website, which is AFR. That's for American Family Radio, AFR.net. My program here uh, airs at 2 p.m. every day uh, Eastern time and 11 o'clock Pacific time because it airs live. So they can find it at AFR.net and audio stream it right there. We've also got an app, an AFR Talk app. People can download if they want to listen on the go. Brian Fisher, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, and thank you for joining us here today on The Schilling Show Unleashed. You're welcome, Rob. Thanks for having me on. That concludes another edition of The Schilling Show Unleashed podcast. Visit us online at shillingshow.com where you can directly support this podcast by clicking on the Patreon banner at the top of the page and making a monthly donation. Your support is essential for the continuation of The Schilling Show Unleashed podcast. Until next time...